welcome back to my channel and another new video. In this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how open source is changing the way people, you know, and companies hire. So if you don't know what open source is, we're gonna talk about that and how, you know, open source can help you in uh, getting a job, basically. And what sorts of jobs you need, what are the prerequisites, how to get it. In addition to that, you know, the current industry standard. You may have seen like uh, so many layoffs are happening, right? And uh, there are so many various paths that students take in order to get a job when they're, you know, uh, in their university. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So let's talk about what is open source. So in simple terms, I'm not going to go into the theoretical definition. From a student's point of view, a simple point can be there is some nice big project, okay, that people and companies around the world are using, like uh, Linux, for example, okay. So Linux is open source. You can find the code online. And uh, open source, you know, on these projects as a student, you can contribute to these projects. You can add in a feature, solve some bugs. And uh, that's basically in simple terms, what is open source? If you, more, if you want more of a technical definition you know, around open source, the licensing and everything that you can Google, but in simple terms, you can contribute to big projects just from the comfort of your home. Other ways you can contribute is one more thing I want to mention is while we're talking about contributions, this is an amazing, important point. And you can actually get started with it today. So I always recommend learning in public and I've made a video on that already, but I'll, I'll do a little bit of a deep dive on it later on. But you can join our uh, monthly blogging challenges. So the idea is you can write a blog on anything and, uh, you know, we give, we've given away some exciting like prizes like MacBooks, Jordans, keyboards, uh, prize monies and everything. So for this month, you can take part in our tracks. You can take part in the, you can write a, you can write a basically a blog on your 2022 wrap up. Okay. So what all things you learned in 2022, anything you can write, get get going on that because you know you can push yourself to write one blog every week and that will help you create a very nice profile of yours. It can be tech blogs, your experiences, non-tech blogs, community blogs and everything. So while you're getting started your blogging journey, you can take part in the challenges we are running. So there are some steps to take part in it we, if you want to win the amazing prizes. So you have you can just write any blog on your Hashnode platform, any anything you want. And uh, when you're publishing that blog, so then you can just mention, as you can see over here, you can write uh, hashtag we may devs when you're publishing. So your own personal platform on Hashnode, you can start your own newsletter as well. And I'd recommend you to do that. So it's very simple. Just write a blog on Hashnode and use hashtag we make devs when you publish it and we will find it and we will give you some prizes. We've given you already some amazing prizes previously so you can check it out. Okay, cool. So that's you know what I wanted to mention about some blogging stuff. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about how open source is now changing hiring as well. So another question you may have is if I'm mentioning about the blogging part, Kunal, does the, you know, having a blog or a portfolio or something like that helps when you're getting hired. Absolutely. Yeah. There have been many instances where people share like blogging helped them get a job and all these other things. So moving on to the next part of this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the hiring scenario. So in India, it's a little bit different. So we talk about hiring via open source, hiring via project contributions, hiring via, you know, uh, just apply and referral and networking or whatever. The difference is quite a lot when compared to when even we compare India with the rest of the countries. One of the reasons being India is a lot of, you know, there are a lot of many people here. So hundreds and thousands of uh, students, graduates, engineers every year. So a lot of competition. That's why, you know, a lot of competition. Outside India, it's it's uh, it's also, uh, it's, it's good, but it's not as bad as India. Okay. In India, the situation is pretty, pretty messed up. I believe one of the reasons for that is too much population. So you talk about, let's say US or something, you, you know, you have a nice portfolio, you talk to nice people, you've done good work in public, uh, you know, you have some nice uh, projects, contribute some open source or whatever. I'm not saying do all of these things. Okay, but at least you did something in your university life that you showed effort and something, there's a high chance you will find a job. Okay. And, uh, the, you know, people are very, uh, open-minded over there in terms of like, you know, if someone is working hard, someone is showing promise, someone is, uh, you know, uh, working working on their skills, learning new things. It doesn't matter if, you know, they're a beginner or a pro or whatever. Anyone can start with getting a job in tech. Okay. I want to give a huge shout out to my friend Julia as well. So I met Julia at KubeCon and uh, that was last KubeCon. Now, after a few months, she started working at uh, VM. 
How awesome! And how did that happen? Well, she worked really hard in the. So she attended KubeCon, networked with people, you know, and then the study part. So studying about new technologies and stuff, and not just studying but applying that somewhere. Okay, so doing community work. uh creating blogs or tutorials and youtube videos and uh you know open source contributions and stuff and all these other things and they're like okay hey i've done so many amazing things can you can i please get hired they're like yeah absolutely incredible we will hire you in india this things changes in india no one gives a crap okay um i'm not saying like everyone is like that uh poor choice of word uh many companies value it okay but most companies do not so if i talk about um uh, let's say if i go to one of the fan companies right and i'm let's say from i'm not from a college or whatever okay i'd i'd never did btech or whatever and i want to get a job at google india or microsoft india or amazon in india and i'll say hey i have some nice open source contributions and uh, you know let's say i'm from bsc pharmaceutical but i want to get into tech and i want a job at your company give me one example of a person who got a job at big tech company in india from such a non 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 tech background let's say no 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 tech background and let's say no um you know um no degree even and they just did some let's say contributions or whatever and they apply they are not even eligible not even eligible recruiter will not even listen to you okay so whatever things that i'm going to mention in this video about open source is changing the way people are hiring it highly impacts india more than any other country because in all the other countries they already hire you know nicely but in india the hiring situation is messed up so why big tech acts act big tech companies in india act a little weird and why you should not aim for these tech companies is what i'm going to share in this third part of the video so you apply to a big tech company in india like google microsoft you ask for a referral to someone who works in india if they don't know you most of the time they will ask for your company performing rankings and this is so ironic because not a single person in india not a single person in the history has made the name in computer programming for india we are never forget about winning we are never in the top finals even when it comes to computer programming contest check out the history you know 20 years 30 years or whatever since when of these programs are running there is not a single person who has even come in the finals forget about winning even come in the finals the high schoolers of countries outside india you know like uh, russia or uh, china and us or whatever the high schoolers are like the 10 times more knowledgeable when compared to indian computer programmers so i'm just mentioning the cp thing because of the irony that you uh, yourself have never done nothing for your country in the field of computer programming but you are asking for cp rankings okay because they to be quite frank i am not sure if they know anything about other than computer programming or data science algorithms because i have personally seen people just do that and they give their interviews get a job and then they get fired or then they you know uh, quit and then they start their own business so you can only ask people the skills that you have if they were like you know real engineers they'd ask hey you have some nice open source contributions it's a nice projects oh so many international conferences and stuff wow very good we would love to have you very very rarely i think that might happen but i have not seen a single example the ne- next thing why you should not aim for these tech companies let's get to a real like a realist part is the pay is very less so microsoft base pay is around 13 lpa or 14 15 lpa which is very less after tax it's really really less as compared to even some startups in india and the stock options that you get are very negligible it's 35000 us dollars vested over 4 to 5 years that is nothing that is literally nothing so it's not anything i made a video on this like 40 lpa or whatever so don't do it if you want to get into fang type companies i'd recommend aiming for the united states okay or uh, london uk or something okay because their pay is very high and good work like good 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 projects that they get to work on and good like uh, i mean i don't know much about the project because i've never worked at fang india uh, i can only share the information that is public but um, you can learn a little bit more about like um, you know the sort of like culture you can talk about uh, you know uh, the opportunities and uh, all all sorts of things right so working at silicon valley let's say for meta the pay is very high as compared to india which is really really uh, laughable so less pay that's why i would also not recommend uh, you know big tech in india 
The third thing is a discrimination. Big tech does not come to every college, right? So there's a uh, there's a discrimination that they do. And point number four is overrated. It's very overrated. No pay. Hiring structure is broken. Pay is less. And uh, work life balance. I have not heard very good things about. I have heard good things about the Microsoft India work life balance. I have not heard good things about the Amazon India work life balance. Could be wrong, but you can ask your friends who are non influencers who work at these companies. Influencers will always lie because they have to make their brand. Like, oh, I work at this company, it's amazing. I will teach you how to get into it. No influencer will be like, okay, I work at this company, it's really garbage. Uh, please don't go here. No, that will not bring in views, right? They will only share that after they quit. So it's overrated. That's also why I not recommend. Point number five is one more thing around hiring that people have you know, in their mind is uh, IITs. So I would not recommend IIT now, especially if you're trying to get into tech. 100% you can do IIT and if you want to get into tech, if you're getting that much of a good rank, like computer science or IT or related to that, I would not recommend doing any other branch just for the sake of getting into an IIT. Why? Check this out. So as you can see, even the placements are frozen for Amazon Meta for like international hires. It's not hiring from IIT. Here you can see this amazing tweet with proof of stats. So as you can see, 60% of the students of engineering physics, 35% of civil engineering, and 33% of industrial engineering students were not even placed, even though they were registered for placement. These students got into IIT Roorkee like, oh, we want to do computers, but we will take industrial engineering, for example, because people do that. We'll take engineering physics. Well, yeah, we are getting IIT. 60% of those people did not even get placed. Forget about getting minimum placement. Zero. They did not even get placed. So things are changing now because of the remote work culture in India. No one really gives a crap about IIT anymore when it comes to hiring people in tech. Okay, it goes on and on. IIT Kharagpur. 33%, 55% of biotech engineers, 33% aerospace, 30% of civil engineers could not get a job. Now, other argument that people make is, Kunal, but the IIT tag will help you when you apply off campus. Absolutely not. In India, it may help, but that is not what I'm trying to promote. I'm trying to promote global work culture. Fine, IIT may help you in India. That's good. How much salary would you get? 15 LPA, 18 LPA, 20 LPA with that IIT tag. Is that really worth it? No, absolutely not worth it. Instead, you can contribute to open source, which we're talking about in this video, and you can get, you know, 60, 70 lakhs per annum base pay as a student. Worst case scenario, 40 lakhs per annum. Below average minus negative scenario, like the very poverty line scenario for remote work, 25 lakhs per annum base pay, which is twice of, almost twice of Amazon India below poverty line of the remote work pay that companies offer to people in India. Like very, very minimal, very, very minimal. That's at least 20, 20 lakhs per annum. At least. Okay. But that's not always the case. On an average, if you work a little bit hard, on an average, the pay is 40 to 50 lakhs per annum, base pay. And no extra tax or anything you need to pay. Full much. And, uh, that's why I don't recommend. So these five points we discussed, and as you can see, there's it's not just me speaking. This is this guy on Twitter. You know, you see 100k US dollar plus salaries in tech plus don't know how to code. You can he gave me a nice little shout out. So I really appreciate that. Right? There are so many scenarios for this. That's what I'm trying to promote. No scenario in which fan companies in India can come close to what remote work offers. There is not a single statement in which Fang India companies can come close. Okay, so for India, we talked about the third point, big tech acts a little weird, doesn't offer anything, and a very overrated discrimination, less pay, uh, ask for the CP rankings, even though we have failed in computer programming as a country, and we will keep on failing for the next, till the computer programming thing exists, because we are not doing it to win contests, we are doing it to clear coding rounds, and you don't have to do it to clear coding rounds. You can just do lead code. Lead code is more than enough to clear online coding rounds, interview rounds, or anything. You can check out my YouTube video for that. Okay. Um, now, point number four. Let's talk about point number four. How open source helps. 
So you get a global network. That's a very important point of open source. You get a global network of people and communities. Speaking of communities, you can, uh, you know, I, I, I just spoke about Hashnode, right? So Hashnode community, you can join and you can share your blogs and your blogs will be viewed by other community members. How cool is that? Right? The blogs will be viewed by other community members. So that's amazing. And uh, you know, many people who, you know, started blogging on Hashnode, then they got a role. So be consistent. Consistency is key when we talk about you know, uh, when, you're, when you're learning or contributing to open source or whatever, or creating your own, let's say, channel or your own newsletter or blogging platform or whatever, consistency is key. And because of that consistency, we have created the monthly blogging challenges. Right? So that's point number one. Get a global network and community. You have proof of work. Okay, you have proof of work. Um, if you just, you know, talk about like, hey, uh, I want to apply for a web development role. Here's my GitHub profile. All the projects are listed there. You contribute to some big projects, then that would be listed there. Everything is out in the public. So you have proof of work. And the people you, you, who you meet, you know, when you contribute to open source, most of the time they will only refer you to their companies. Okay, if they have an opening. Uh, you get to learn new skills, you get referrals, all sorts of things. So that's how open source is changing the hiring structure. And most of the people, most of these people work remotely. So open source is also sort of like promoting remote work. Okay. And um, remote work is going to change the shape of our country, you know, if you talk about it. All right. Point number four is, we already talked about everything, but point number, you know, uh, sorry, point number five, this is the last point. When you work remotely, so this is a little bit funny. When you work remotely, things that feel too big or too exclusive to, you know, people who are, let's say, not working remotely and working on low wages in India, that is like sort of like normal to remote workers. Okay, remote workers are not like really bragging anything. They are just living their normal life. Living their normal life. But people who have not seen that level of income for a freshman, they will see like as a very big thing. For remote workers, that is not a big thing. For example, uh, this is a little bit stereotypical, but it's true and specifically applies to people in India. Things that, you know, people in India get really excited about. Uh, going to the United States, very big thing for Indian students, right? And it should be as well. It's not easy. Um, going to Europe, you know, um, going on a vacation, let's say 10-day vacation to any country in the world you want. It's a very big thing for, you know, people who are earning 15 lakhs per annum. It's a very big thing. You have to plan, you have to save, you have to give EMIs and everything. So I'm not demeaning anyone. Okay, I'm just stating a fact. And if I'm not, how am I supposed to convey to you what you can do via remote work without saying it? Okay, stop taking everything with you no know, to heart because I'm, I'm, I'm only mentioning the facts over here. Okay, if you want to take your entire family to Europe for a month, it's going to cost you how much? 20 lakhs. Without even giving it a thought and just swiping your card for 20 lakh, remote work can help you do that. Fang India will not help you do that. You can't do it while working at fan type companies in India. And I'm not giving this as a motivation. Okay, absolutely not. Even the wanderlust inside of me has died now because I travel too, too much. So I, I get it, travel is overrated and you know, you don't have to spend too much money and you know, materialistic things or whatever. I'm just giving an example that if you want to achieve such things, you want to buy a villa that is worth, I don't know, um, let's say in London, it's uh, a million pounds, 10 crore rupees, right? Can you do that with a 15 lakh per annum monthly salary? Senior engineers in Microsoft make 30 lakhs per annum. No, you can't. 10 crores is a little, lot of money. It's a very big amount of money. The small ray of sunshine that you have is remote work and or start your own business. Okay? So, again, this is not a... I, I, I know I'm, I may sound... I, I am cringed on this thing that I'm saying right now as well. Okay, I myself, I'm cringing. Oh, Kunal, you're talking about, you know, like an influencer, all the cars and houses or monies or whatever. But no, these are essentials of life. And uh, how else am I supposed to praise and help you and, you know, change your life by raising awareness about remote work if I don't talk about it and give examples? Because I just moved to the UK and I've experienced this myself. I just took my family, entire family to Dubai. Cost me more than Amazon's base pay for a one week trip. So, 
when I'm in these shoes and I think about it, like all the amazing possibilities that are out there, Kunal, you know, you're getting so many nice possibilities and everything. Why are other students not doing it? Why why is no one doing it? So I'm only trying to help you, you know, do it. It's, imp- it's important. You, you should work remotely. Fang India should be your least backup option. Okay? Because these people are very, like, they, they discriminate and the, it's overrated, less pay and just not very good. Okay? And I want my audience to succeed very big in life. Okay? Succeed very nicely in life. So that's why I'm promoting remote work and that's why I'm giving these examples. It's not motivation. It's just an example I'm giving you. Um, so things that feel too big for people who work in India are day-to-day for remote workers. Okay? Okay? So if you want to normalize having a above average lifestyle, you have to work remotely or you have to start your own business. Okay? Um, if you're not rich, basically. So you start your own business or you work remotely. Um, I can't really talk a little bit more about like stocks or whatever. I don't know how to get rich with, rich with stock marketing. But I can definitely teach you how to get rich via working remotely and having your own like personal portfolio and blogging or whatever. Do you know how much amount of money for one blog people can make? $200, $300 for one blog if you're very good at writing. Just for one blog. Why are you not taking this opportunity? Start your blog today, make it pretty. So, Kunal, what do you mean by make it pretty? Let me show you. So, if we go to blogs.vmakedevs.org, see how pretty. Case studies, cube letter, sponsor, newsletter, right? People can sign up to my newsletter and get, you know, uh, all the information in their uh, e- email only. Now you're like, Kunal, is this paid? Absolutely not. Hashnode is completely free. So you can just go to Hashnode and you can create your own newsletter. You can say, start a personal blog. That's it. Absolutely incredible. People can sign up and you can write and do challenges and everything. And I already shared with you the, so you can see, if you talk about this, uh, you know, Sachin has, let's say, for example, posted something. He used the tags, we make devs. Now I will find this and we will be able to give them some you know, nice swag and some other things. So for this month, so these are all the people writing, you know, we make devs. How cool is that? And we help them, we promote their tweets and, and do all sorts of nice things. Okay, so it's definitely not an easy thing. If a company is paying you 50, 60 lakhs per annum, base pay, including stocks and other benefits, it will be difficult to get in, but you have to work hard. Okay, and you know, let's get started or uh, contribute to open source. Um, so here's what you can do right now. Contribute to open source. Take part in the weekly challenge. One thing that you can do right now is write a 2022 wrap-up blog on Hashnode and submit it. That's it. And then you start your journey. Write a blog every week. We have the blogging challenge going on. So we will help you we'll to retweet and stuff. And we'll give you some swag and prizes as well. And uh, second thing you can do is, so that's first thing, link in the description. Second thing, Contribute to open source. Open source is incredible. Uh, you can join Eddie Hub community. You can check out our open source projects. We've just open sourced our website, but we're planning to do more and more such things. And the third thing is attend international events because there you will meet companies around the world and people around the world and you will network with them. So please network with co- global communities as much as possible. By global communities, I don't mean, I don't mean communities outside India. Okay. Communities that are in India, they can also be global. For example, Cube Simplify. So Cube Simplify is being run by Siam and some other students in India, but it's not an Indian community. It's a global community. You see the live streams they do and everything, uh, with like uh, they did with Raw Code and other people. So they are global people. And it's very, very important for you as an Indian student to grow global. Because in India, a lot of people are just going to take advantage of your naiveness and sell you stuff. But when you go global, you will realize how the world works. Okay? And by global, I don't mean move abroad. Okay, you don't have to do it. You can stay in India and work for companies outside India remotely. Okay? And that's a lot of money. So, because India is a relatively cheap cheap country to live in. Like, living expenses are very cheap. Okay? For example, as compared to London, India is very cheap. I am here because I am young and I can afford it. So I, um, I'm just 
my plan is to live in various countries and have fun enjoy my life in my 20s and uh, i'm also here because you know one of the main reasons why i'm here basically is um I want to work more closely with the team members and even though i promote remote work quite a lot uh, i think hybrid is something that i would prefer but if you're getting remote work then definitely there is this disadvantage that you can't really meet the team in person every day if you like to do that but the pros are very much so don't worry about it so i love meeting my team and uh, going to you know our office spaces we have and just net talking to people in person sharing ideas so hybrid work culture is great my company is completely remote okay i just go because i want to it's my choice so uh, thanks a lot for watching as an action item share your 2020 wrap up blog check out the link in the description below for the hashnode challenges and if you have any other questions you can just ask me right and uh, you can even tweet it and you can let's say do one thing let's let me talk let me give you an exercise for uh, you know um Let me give you an exercise for the Let's say you can what you can do is you can take a screenshot of this Okay and you can write a tweet thread like hey I'm taking part in the hashnode challenge you can tag hashnode and then you can say something like um, to hear my threads of what i learned in 2022 and then using that thread you can make a blog out of it and that at the end of uh, january we will give some prizes away so only 10 days are left good luck and uh, any questions you have you can list in that tweet only you can tag me and i will reply to your questions over there thanks for watching and if you have any questions also you can you know tweet those or leave those in the comment section below like share and subscribe and uh, contribute to open source i'll see you in the next one have a great day